What's up guys, Texas Platinum is back. Hope you are staying warm in the midst of this really cold week here in Texas. Uh, we got Matt Myers, Matt Madrid, and myself, and we're going to be talking about the Texas football schedule for 2021 that just dropped today, or at least as of the recording of this show, whenever it comes out. And we're just going to give instant reactions on it. We don't really have much planned for this video. It's going to be kind of a loose cannon episode, so let us know if you like that format. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, we're pretty prepared for this this time around. We're just talking. Uh, but before we hop into it, one, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're continuing to grow and produce new content. So definitely something that you should check out. Definitely something you should check out if you're a Texas fan. And then number two, uh, drop us a like, give us a comment, and uh, feel free to engage with us down below. Okay, Matt Myers, if you're looking at our schedule right now, what do you like? I mean, I'll say this, the, the, the back half of the schedule is pretty – I mean, I like the back half better than the yeah. front half. But the first thing I thought when I saw the schedule was, okay, I'm looking at the – whenever the schedule comes out, the main thing I look for is who are we playing in the Big 12 the couple weeks before Oklahoma. And this year we're mm. playing Texas Tech at – Jeez. <laughs> and no bye week. No, no bye week for yeah. Oklahoma. Which, I mean, you know, the SEC is always lobbing all their powerhouses by weeks at the perfect times, and the Big 12 doesn't know to do that, which is kind of frustrating, but also, screw the SEC, we don't need help. Um, so, yeah, the, the first thing I noticed going back to that is there's four games that I know Tom Herman and Charlie Strong-led teams would, would at least lose two of them. You know, you start off with Louisiana Lafayette, who's going to be a top 25 team, and they return – literally the most production of any team in the country. So that's yeah. going to be like pretty that's much team. with Herman. That's a loss for sure. I don't Herman, know. That would have been a loss immediately. <laughs> that was a Maryland. Yeah. And that'll be more, even though they're better than Maryland, that'll be way more embarrassing than the Maryland loss if that happens. So <laughs> hopefully Sark has some good juju going into week one, because that's no slouch. That team would probably beat half the SEC, if not more than half the SEC teams. And then week two at Arkansas, that's also a game that, you know, the Longhorns of the last 10 years would, especially Tom Herman's type of, top, type of teams, would lose at Arkansas. You know, they're going to be all crazy up for that game because they hate Texas, and um, they, they had a good year last year. They're kind of, you know, in the upswing, and we're one of their oldest rivals, probably their biggest rival, honestly, all time. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're going to be fired up to see, you know, the burn orange coming to Fayetteville, and that's not a give me at all. I'm sure that'll be a night game, and it's going to be probably – Hopefully full capacity, a really crazy atmosphere. And But they do lose Felipe Franks, who I thought was just a god. I love Felipe Franks for, for some reason. And really? Quarterback. So hopefully that will help us get in there. Yeah, I love Felipe Franks. Why? Uh, just, dude, just like his antics, bro, whenever he's playing in Florida, he was just like talking trash, doing interceptions. It was so – it was so. Yeah, that, one, that one Miami opener, man, is going to be serious. Punching the Miami. ball into the stands yeah, the, at the end of the yeah. game. The, the week zero game where he was just – all over the place, just just talking mad shit, but then just <laughs> turning the ball over like every other drive, and it was just very confusing because it's like, does this guy have like like uh, the unlimited amount of like uh, swag, or is he just stupid? Like, I just he was a target man. That's why he yeah, got hurt. He died that game. <laughs> so, like, it was just yeah. I, I I see why you like him. Yeah, you like him on the other team. I don't think you'd like him on our team. I don't know. You'd be frustrating to root for. Maybe not. Maybe not. But he had a good year last year. I'll give him that. I watched him. I went to the yeah, A&M game. He did improve. Arkansas, and he, he looked good. Nice. He improved. And then, yeah, so going back to the, the front half of the schedule, we play Rice at home. That's a win. Texas Tech at home with Tom Herman. That's, that's a toss-up. But hopefully with Sark, that's a win. Texas Tech does return a lot. You know, Rico, Rico Jeff. I get them all confused. Rico Jeffers, Rico Gathers. I don't know which one's which. Um, and then, but either way, <laughs> we're going to win that game at home with Sark. That's a fact. And then at TCU, that is a death sentence for us. It's been a death sentence since they joined the Big 12. Uh -huh. uh, we won one time there, and that was with Mac in like TCU's like first or second year in the Big 12. Yeah. And we haven't won since. And TCU returns a lot. If they're going to make a move with Gary Patterson again before he retires, it's going to be this next year because. It's kind of getting to that point where if Patterson doesn't get together this year, 
then he's going to be on the hot seat or retire or be asked out nicely to leave because he's kind of been project like trending down recently and he's got a good roster coming back you know they finally have a quarterback they return a lot zach evans quentin johnson a lot of their defense so that's going to be a tough game i think they're going to be a top 25 caliber team so basically there's four games before oklahoma that could be tricky especially yeah. especially three louisiana at arkansas at tcu those i mean we definitely going to drop one of those i think i mean if we somehow show up unscathed to oklahoma that would be just absolutely a dream scenario because even if you take a loss to OU, you got a, a manageable second half of the schedule at that point to maybe pick up another loss, but still get into the Big 12 championship. And that's the goal for 2021. So I don't know, man. I, I think the schedule looks pretty good, but also we could lose a bunch of these games like at West Virginia, uh, at Iowa State in the second half. Oh, my at God. At Iowa State, scary. Yeah, yeah we're gonna. It's gonna be blackout conditions. This, in is, this is a tough schedule. <laughs> That's my thoughts. Yeah, like I would, I would trade the schedule with A and M's for sure. Absolutely. Um, just a uh, initial thought before. I, does does Tech is Alan Bowman back or is he is he done? He transferred. He transferred. Right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, then okay, I'm not as scared as I get. But but T J Vasher. <laughs> Is he still there? Still there, apparently. Ah, those guys like go away. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Tech playing tech is always weird. Um, what scares me is the TCU game right before Oklahoma, and depending, I feel like how depending how we play in that game, uh, kind of sets the tone for that for for the Oklahoma game. And I don't know. I think I feel like we all kind of have PTSD. I mean, like we're gonna lose. We're gonna drop one in the beginning. Of, of, of the of the of the season, um, I like what Matt said about Louisiana. Uh, that they are they're going to be a really tough. Uh, they're not going to go away like La Tech or something where we just outscore them or something like that. They're, they're going to be in our face the whole time, and it and it's somehow going to be a, uh, 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 spun into a worse loss than Maryland, and then we're going to have the whole t- Tom Herman like comparisons and stuff. It's going to be garbage. Um, so if, if if I say if I, I don't know I don't know why I'm feeling like this I'm really scared of Louisiana and TCU just because one Louisiana is good and we'll be implementing all new stuff and then TCU it's Gary Patterson's like last ride so that that in itself is, is pretty is pretty scary um, I really like the last half of the of the of the season I feel like um, I feel like we got some pretty um, easy matchups uh, there um oklahoma state um they're always going to be someone that that gets under our, our skin a little bit and hopefully we don't go to overtime with them again um other than that um arkansas should be really fun um uh, i feel like i don't know i feel people sleep on arkansas a lot especially lately um but there'll be that that'll, that'll be a nice SEC Big Twelve hyped type of game. So, yeah, uh, just really scared of of TCU and why are we playing Rice again? I don't know what that is. That's just a gimme, but I'll take it. I'll take it. I remember watching that game. Oh my god, I was at some like random like little like burger bar thing, and it was just people not watching the game, and it was like <laughs> fifty whatever it was, and it's just I don't know. JFK said it best. Like, why? Why do we? Why are we playing race, man? <laughs> but, yeah. Whatever. What do you uh, think? Yeah. Um, no, I agree that that this is uh, this is a deceivingly tough schedule. I mean, at first glance, it's like, oh, it, you know, that's the thing. It's like, oh, there's no LSU or something, right? Like, no, but then, like, like it, you actually look into it, and you're like, oh, okay. Plus, the Big yeah. Twelve is that. I mean, neither of y'all have mentioned. I guess you mentioned. I, I, Iowa, not Ohio, Iowa State. Um, none of y'all have said anything about Oklahoma, though. Like, this might be the oh, best team they've put game. out since uh, freaking Bob Stoops. Um, hot take here is, and I've said this on, I forgot what show it was, but I, I said this a few months ago. I, I, I have Oklahoma making it to the national title game. I don't have Jeez. them winning. I don't think they're going to win it, but I think they're finally going to win a playoff game this year. They got a really good lineup. Um, offense and defense is just 
stacked. Um, and we need to, <laughs> we need to get going before they get better. Cause they're, they're going to get better if we don't yeah. start hitting here, you know, with recruiting, which is why this is all so important. I'm, I'm so glad that we fired Tom Herman or we'd be, we'd be so screwed. <laughs> we'd be so screwed for the next five years, even if we kept him just one more year. I, I firmly believe that. Um, yeah, Louisiana is a tough game. Arkansas, that's going to be – yeah, that'll be fun. Like like, like Madrid said, I, I think that's going to be a really fun game. Um, they hate Texas so much. And I don't think we even truly – especially our generation because we never played Arkansas, but, like, the old heads. Like, oh, they're going to love that's, that. That's a rivalry game, man. That, yeah. like, that's, that's their – Texas is their biggest rival in their opinion. Um. Tech, yeah, I, I never know what to expect out of them. I mean, they, they can put up a million points or they can suck. We've seen both um, a tale of two cities for them. Same with TCU. Well, TCU has always been kind of consistently. Myers, you said TCU has a quarterback now. Is it not Duggan? Because that guy's 2-0 and against us. No, yeah, I think I, I'm always, I, was, I was talking about Duggan. Oh, you were referring to Duggan. Okay, yeah. That guy shouldn't be good. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't be. He's good against us, but he sucks. Right. Yeah, I don't understand. It's his one good game of the year. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that, that's on the road. That'll that'll definitely be tough. Oklahoma, like I said, I, I I'm saying that we're going to lose to them this year, but I mean it's the Red River game. We can always win, I suppose. Uh, I mean that that'll be. <laughs> That'll be an exciting game, Sark versus Lincoln Riley. Uh, that'll definitely garter some national attention, even if Texas isn't has a couple losses on the schedule at that point. Hopefully not. I don't know. Uh, Oklahoma State, um, they lose a lot, but they still keep – I mean, thank God Tylen Wallace is gone. Chuba's gone too, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I haven't heard a peep about him in the NFL draft, so I'm. I'm yeah, it's weird. That made, me, that made me think like he's gone, but yeah, he's, he's definitely gone. Right, let me see. Let me gone. No, he's I, definitely gone. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> Thank goodness. No, bro, he's gone. All right, <laughs> but they still have Spencer Sanders there, and honestly, uh, turnover prone. They well, yeah, but I was gonna say they could be better without. Tylen Wallace and Chuba Hubbard, but that was that's that's a stupid thought. I don't know where that's not more. It needs that's... more. <laughs> you agree? Because I, I think they'll cater the offense more around him and his skill set. Unless unless uh, Coach Gundy goes to oh God, what was that other quarterback that they played who looked really good? Who was more their traditional Oklahoma State quarterback? Damn, what was his name? Yeah, that white. Guy. I don't know his name. I forget his name, but he was he was good too. He's a big old you know pocket passer. But no, I think. You know, it'd be very Mike Gunny to put out Jerry a good Diggie. brand in here. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, Jerry Diggie. Yeah, that's a good guy. Diggie. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at West Virginia. Like, no, yeah, that's West Virginia. Seth Diggie played at Tech. <laughs> Who was that? Jared Diggie. That was, that was the West Virginia uh, 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 football lineup you can look at. And there was like a little ear like thing on this thing. I got real curious why there was an ear thing. And then it just <laughs> so, pronounced the last name. I thought or, it was Doge. I thought it'd be better if it was Doge. Doge. Why the hell can I find this guy? Quarterback. All right. quarterback. Oklahoma State. Illing, Illingworth. Shane Illingworth. That's who it is. I mean, he even sounds like an Oklahoma State quarterback. That's such a, that's I mean, such an OSU last name for a quarterback. Um, yeah, I don't know what to think of Oklahoma State. Baylor will be in a total rebuild, right? Yeah, yeah they suck. They suck. They're done. Yeah. They're done for a while. Iowa State. You were saying Iowa State. What were you going to say? Me? Yeah, yeah before they, I, you were like, I, Iowa they, State. And then I started talking. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say that Iowa State, you know, tell your kids about – the Iowa State Cyclones 2021 playoff contenders, like in the playoffs, because they return everybody, their defense, Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, Xavier Hutchinson, and Charlie Kohler, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're literally all back. They're literally all there. 
But, you know, they're going to end up losing to Northern Iowa in week one, then, you know, parlay that into going, like, on a 10-game winning streak. Yeah. So That's what they do. Yep. <laughs> and we play there, and they'll be in their black ass in November. It'll probably be, like, really cold. So, chalk that up for a big, fat loss. I don't know. I, Iowa State I never them. scares me that much. I don't know why, even though we, like, lose to them half the time. They never scare me. They don't. It'll be, close. it'll be close. I mean, it's always close. They're not that explosive. We'll, we'll, it'll be a really close game. We could win that game, being honest. But No, we could. No, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then Ooh, if they go Kansas. White, we go all white. I'm sorry. Like, for uniforms up there, that'd be, that'd be sick. I don't know. Just a <laughs> black versus white. I don't know. I'm just thinking about that. Yeah, that's what happened world. last time. That was such a horrible game. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a Tom Herman loss. That was so bad. I don't even think I don't even think we got fifty yards of rushing, and we like tried to run the ball. It wasn't like we stayed away from the run; like we ran a lot. We didn't even crack fifty. It was bad. Uh, Kansas at home. Uh, we missed playing Kansas this year. It'll it'll be good to to play another shootout against KU. It'll be nice. <laughs> Uh, at West Virginia, yeah, they, they hate us too. <laughs> so that'll be fun. <laughs> and then Kansas State for – is that on Thanksgiving or is that the day after? Probably the day after. Maybe Probably the day after. Thanksgiving, the 27th. What is that? No, that's Saturday. Oh, they're not even playing on Friday. Oh, nice. There we go. Finally switching to Saturday. We, we've been lobbying for this for a while. Yeah. Without A and M, there's no reason to play on Thanksgiving. There's no reason to play the day after Thanksgiving. Play it on a weekend. Let the students come back into town. That this is a good idea. Nice. Out a boy. Let them enjoy Turkey yeah. Day. Let them eat, rest, do all that thing, and Saturday, let's go. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Will K State be good? I mean, I mean, we Skylar Thompson. Him. Skylar Thompson's back oh, again. No, he's not. He is back. I promise. Yeah. No, he's not. He was having a good season too. He's, he's been around. Is he coming back because of the COVID rule? Yeah. Because <laughs> he was a four-year senior last year. He's using the COVID year, bro. He's coming back. Are you? Sam, are, you are you sure? Sam I'm, wishes. I'm positive, and oh, so is Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn's back too, so they might well, be good. But we have him in Austin, thankfully. Yeah, Deuce versus Bijan part two. That'll be fun. Yeah. So looking at the schedule, though, I see five for sure wins. And, I mean, I say five. That's including a Kansas State as a for sure win. So it could honestly be four for sure wins. But I do have five for sure wins and then seven toss-ups. So <laughs> let's, give, let's give Sark the benefit of the doubt. We split the top – you know, there's seven games. Let's say we win four of the, of the seven toss-ups. That puts us at nine and three. And that's what I'm – I'm predicting because I will never That's predict baseline us. for me too. Yeah, I will never predict us to be good ever again until I actually see it because I've been yeah. heartbroken year after year after year after year after year. I've been years. wrong for my predictions like horribly, like every single season. Let's say played. let's say eight and four to be safe. Seven and five. <sighs> mm, that doesn't feel good though. Let's give them a whole year just to tank and then see where we go from there. Yeah. I'm sa- I'm saying eight wins. I feel comfortable with that. I'll be honest. I'm going to be very disappointed if we don't get nine, like straight up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm done with this eight win shit. <laughs> hey, I might call for his head if we get eight, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, this is fitting. I just I was scrolling through Twitter right now and I pulled up on Longhorn Frenzy and I he just posted a picture. I don't know if y'all can read this, but it says it's on Texags or the week schedule. Yeah, well, you <laughs> wish. So there you have it. Our schedule's weak. So. We should run the table, right? Twelve yeah, and right. I mean, they said so. Yeah, yeah. So, little twelve isn't any good. Yeah. A <laughs> M's winning the natty, though. I mean, that's that's just facts. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't have anything to pull up, but I remember seeing it a while ago. R.J. Young projected Texas and Texas A and M to meet in the Sugar Bowl this year. Yeah, the man's just looking for the clicks. I was like, come on now. Yeah. Come on now, son. But wouldn't that be cool? I mean, yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be scary, <laughs> too. <Never allow> it. 
Bro, I'm not scared. We always beat AM. We'll beat them. Even if they're better than not, us. We'll, not for we'll the Sugar Bowl, them. though. Like that <laughs> that adds a whole level of stakes onto it that right? actually makes me nervous. Ah, uh, Sugar Bowl's not that big a deal. If it was playoffs, I would lose my mind. Oh, yeah, fair point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to play AM, but that'll never happen until I want to play comfortable every playing time. again. At every turn. So we know how that story goes. Yeah. It may never happen for them. I don't know. Sad. Yeah. I don't know what they're looking for, but they don't want to play Texas. I, I don't think they're looking for anything. I think they just don't want to play us. And it's, just being petty about it, straight up. Yeah, they just – we don't need Texas. We got SEC. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. I could go off on that tangent. I'm not even going to give it the end. I'm not even going to address it. Yeah. Final thoughts on the schedule, guys. Um, I think it's too early to tell. Um, with if, like prediction wise, like if I really like, sat down and pre- predicting it uh, until until we see how this roster shapes up or the or in spring ball, but it looks uh it looks good. It looks it looks uh nine wins seems possible, but it's first year new head coach. We've seen this before. I'll wait and see. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm expecting eight and four, maybe nine and three. Yeah. But we, go. we will have our actual, you know, like predictions and more analysis way down the line. It's a long off season, but we wanted to talk about the schedule today as it just came out and it's fresh. Yep. I agree with you. I'm saying eight wins. Um, I think that's a that's a good Good prediction. Not, Subject not, to change, though. Yeah, <laughs> right. They heavily change. Yeah, we'll set. We'll be like, oh, we're going undefeated. <laughs> Come on! Uh, I might see Spring Ball and be like, Damn. I'm taking it this year. Casey throwing take- that ball like a beast. He's taking it. We have Bijan. Yeah, we got Bijan. What if we actually start using Jake Smith correctly? Nice. Or, uh, any of these players? For real. Honestly, yeah. though. If, the if high school, they'd be there. If Sark's just mildly competent as a head coach, there's no reason we can't win 11 games. <laughs> You're kind of right. You're kind of right. I don't know. This will be fun, man. For the first time in a long time, I'm, like, legitimately excited. E- even, if, even if it's, like, an eight-win eight season, like, I'm excited for change. Same. And a lot, of, a lot of bleh. A lot of bleh. With Herman. This will this will be some excitement. Okay, guys. Well, anything else before I wrap it up for us? You're good. Good. Okay. Well, that wraps up a very <laughs> spontaneous reaction style episode of Texas Platinum. Uh, like we said in the beginning, we typically plan these episodes out quite a bit. Uh, this one we just decided to kind of react and do it more organically um so if this was something that y'all liked uh maybe we'll do more reaction episodes and more chill laid back uh not really planned out (laughs) content for you guys um so leave us a like leave us a comment if you liked it um let us know your thoughts about the season we're curious to hear y'all's or way too early projections as well and um yeah hope you guys have a good one thanks for watching welcome Deal.